friends, I'm Rainy. This is Rainy Day Reads, and welcome back for another floss tube episode. Uh, I do books and knitting and cross stitch and sometimes crochet on my channel, but I'm trying to just dedicate at least one video a month to just my crafting with no book content. But if you're interested in book content, you can find a lot of that on my channel because <laughs> I was originally just a booktuber. So anyway, as you could tell from the thumbnail of this video and my current state of dress, I have had a couple of knitting finishes over the past month since I last uh, updated uh, you all on my projects. And I've had a cross stitch finish as well. So First off, let's get the uh, knitting out of the way in case I get way too hot to keep this sweater on and have to go change. <laughs> so as you can see, I have finished my white horse sweater by Caitlin Hunter, and I didn't situate the camera just right, but uh, it's supposed to be kind of cropped, but it comes down to like just my hips, which is a little bit uh, shorter than I generally like my shirts to be. I like them to come down to about the the uh, start of my um, the upper part of my leg. <laughs> so it's a little bit shorter than I like. So I keep kind of pulling on it, and messing with it. But um, but otherwise, I am really happy with how this ended up coming out. I was a little bit worried that it was going to be too tight on me, uh, since you know I started this in. 2020 before, I think, yeah, it was 2020, um, kind of in the midst of lockdown before I gained all the lockdown weight. <laughs> so I was a little concerned that once I got this finished, it would not really fit, but thankfully with the magic of blocking, it does. <laughs> so um, I finished this only a couple of days ago and I have been blocking it uh, for the last couple of days, and this is the first time I'm actually wearing it. So uh, it's 80 degrees outside <laughs> right now. Uh, so I will not be keeping this on past this video and not wearing it out of the house for the immediate future. But, um, but yeah, I wanted to show you all the finished product. So um, this is made out of fingering weight yarn. And I, I always forget to bring down the extra uh, yarn from this this uh, sweater, but it is a cotton acrylic blend yarn that I found on Amazon, and so it's it you know it's nothing fancy. It came in a pack of four 50 gram balls. I got two packs, and actually I only dipped into the second pack. Uh, for the last bit of one of the arms. So I I didn't really need that second pack, but I kind of wish that I would have thought to make the sweater longer. <laughs> but hey, whatever, it is what it is. I'm not going to take it out to try to, you know, add on any length or anything. Um, but yeah, I really like it. It's comfortable and except for me. <laughs> messing with it, but I'll get over that. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I'm really happy about it. And this lace was very intricate and I'm not going to say that it was easy because it wasn't th that easy, but at the same time, it did go quickly. Like once I kind of got into the rhythm and um, kind of got used to making these little bobble things, it was not that, not that bad as long as I kept, you know, um, kept up with the pattern and knew where I was and everything, it was fine. So uh, but yeah, I'm really happy with it. So let me get my other knitting finish that you would have seen in my thumbnail. This is the Alaska hat pattern by uh, Camille Descato, I think is how you say her last name. I'll put all her information down below. Um, but she also has a sweater pattern called the Alaska sweater that I might need to make at some point. <laughs> um, but this was my first uh, try at color work. 
knitting and because I'm not a con continental knitter, I am a English style thrower. Um, and so I was a little bit like, oh, I don't know if I can hold yarn in both hands and try to knit and all that stuff. But actually, it was surprisingly easy. And I mean, if you're going to try color work, I would go, I would try something small like a hat for your first try. Um, and because, you know, if it, it's just a small pattern, it's not like you have to do color work all over a sweater or something, you know, or have multiple colors. So the gray, I'm actually not sure what this is because I lost the ball band and it was a gift from a friend. So I believe it is knit picks, but I'm not sure. I don't think it's scroll. It might be, it calls for, the, the pattern calls for um, knit picks chroma fingering weight for this, um, this part because it's supposed to be a, a gradient. So I, I can't remember. I, I don't think this is chroma, but um, but I do believe it's a knit picks yarn, but I just can't remember the the type, you know, but it's, yeah, it, it's just, uh, it's it, I think it has wool in it, but eh, I don't know. But the, um, the background color, which is supposed to kind of look like the Aurora Borealis is um, Lorna's Laces. And I don't remember the colorway for this either. Um, but I don't actually know if it had a colorway, maybe just a number, but, um, Lorna's Laces is sadly no longer dying. I just happened to find this at my local yarn store and didn't know that it was a, a dyer that no longer dies. And I went to look up her information and found the post on her website where she says she's shutting down her shop. So that was sad, but I really liked this yarn. Um, so that makes me sad that I only got one skein of it, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I'm not normally a hat person. I think I look kind of awkward in hats, but this I will definitely wear because it was a labor of love. I think it's really pretty and it's probably the most expensive hat I've ever owned. <laughs> and, uh, and it actually, it come because of this double brim, the folded brim, I'm able to like get it down to my ears to keep my ears warm. So I think it will work out well for the winter. So, oh, and I don't know if I said, but it's supposed to have a pom-pom on top, but I kind of forgot about that because I don't know how to make a pom-pom without a pom-pom maker. <laughs> I have a video um, that I saved on my watch later list to learn how to make them, but I never got around to actually doing it. So, but I'm okay with not having a pom-pom on it. So. I think it looks fine the way it is. So yeah, so these are my two knitting finishes. Now on the knitting front, I have some other options that I need to start <laughs> in the near future um, for the fall garment make along that is hosted by Knitty Natty. I don't remember because I've started this a couple of times, but I don't know if I said that I am that I submitted this finish for the make-along. It's a three-month make-along. So I submitted this as a uh, entry <laughs> in that make-along when I finished it. And then I went to cast on a uh, bralette, which I think I'm just gonna make into like a halter top and make it longer if I can, because <laughs> um, I'm too old for a bra bralette in my opinion. <laughs> So I would never walk around in just a bralette. So <laughs> I probably will make it into a halter top if I have enough yarn. Um, but I will be using a Hufflepuff yarn by uh, Forbidden Fiber Co, which I will put a picture up of it because I forgot to bring it downstairs. But I started making a shawl with this yarn and I decided I probably wouldn't wear the shawl I'm just not a shawl person. I, I love the look of them, but I just don't wear them that often anyway. So I decided to try to make a garment so that I could submit another uh, project for the fall garment make along. So I will probably be casting that on. It is a crochet pattern. So I will probably be casting that on sometime this week and see if I think it's easy to do. <laughs> 
sometimes crochet. I, I used to crochet a lot before I started knitting, but for some reason now that I've learned to knit, I find crochet harder to understand, but Hopefully I'll get back in the swing of things because I think it's a really nice pattern. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to do it. <laughs> but now let's get into my uh, cross stitch finishes and whips. So I only have one cross stitch finish this, uh, this month <laughs> so far. Um, and that is my favorite day is Wines Day. And this is by the shop Stitch, in, Stitch It Picasso on Etsy. I will link her information down below. And she offered this to me in a collaboration uh, to stitch it up and show her, show it on my channel and on Instagram. And it took me a lot longer to do than I had originally expected um, just because of all my other stuff that I was doing. But I really love how it turned out. I really love that font and uh, just the, it, it's such an easy pattern because it only had, I think there's like six colors, uh, maybe five, I don't remember exactly, but um, so, you know, there's just big blocks of colors and um, it kind of, the, the pinks go into a gradient and the, um, and the greens go into a gradient. So you just, you just stitch the full color and then before you switch to the next color. So it's really easy to do. And she has a lot of great designs and some of them are like this that are uh, quotes and things, but some of them are full coverage, like smaller pieces that are full coverage of like landscapes and Halloween type things and Zodiac type things. She has all kinds of stuff. So I am sure I'll be getting another pattern from her in the near future. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get this framed. I think I'll get like kind of a, just a white frame for it so that the, it just, you know, continues to pop on that white fabric and maybe just something like a white frame that's a little bit more ornate to kind of go with this scrolly work. We'll see. Finishing seems to not happen every day for me. <laughs> so that is my only finish since the last time I talked to you about my projects, but let's talk about my whips at this point. So the biggest thing I have going at the moment is Alice in, uh, Alice in the Flamingo by <clears throat> Mrs. Pagodi Art on Etsy. And this is where I have gotten to so far. And since the last time, I'll put a picture up of my of the progress from the last time I posted. And so I've gotten a lot done. I gave up on my goal of getting this whole thing done by October. There's just no way. <laughs> There's not enough time in the day to get it done in, at this point, less than a month. So my new goal is to get it done by the end of the year. So at that rate, I have to do two pages at least per month. To get it done by the end of the year and I think that's totally doable that's way more doable than what I had going before because <laughs> before I had to do like four pages per month and that was just I would have had to have been a monogamous stitcher which used to not bother me but now that I do floss tube videos it does and I can't be monogam monogamous so um so yeah I am really happy with the progress of this so far and also, I am still behind on my temperature tree by uh, the Stitch and Mommy, Sarah at the Stitch and Mommy. But I have started July's branch, um, and I think I've decided what I am going to do is uh, stitch the next two branches before I start filling in the leaves. So July and August will need to go in with just the brown and then I can um, start filling in those leaves. So then I'll only be a little bit behind. <laughs> so he, I was keeping up with it and then just ah, life. So uh, yeah, but I am re still really happy with how this turned out. And I am excited to find a place to put this at the end of the year. And the last project that I decided is going to be my focus for the month of September 
is Walk Fast by Lindy Stitches. And that is because uh, September is Sampler September. And this is Lindy Stitches, Stephanie's uh, version of a sampler. And this is more up my alley than the more um, vintage type ones that you normally see, which I think those are beautiful, but uh, you know, I, they're just not my decorating style. <laughs> so uh, these brighter, more modern colors are more my style. And I will put a picture up of what the finished product is going to look like. It is a Golden Girls quote that says, uh, you can lead a herring to water, but you better walk fast or he'll die. <laughs> <laughs> and that just, that's my humor right there. So I am excited to get some significant work done on this this month. And I've already finished a couple of motifs this month. And this tree, I think that's a tree, I don't, some kind of plant. <laughs> so I've kind of uh, stalled on the border a little bit because it was a little tedious but I'm going to try to bust that out here soon before I move on to like the lower half of the pattern. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I might just wait till the end to do the border. <laughs> so that's actually all of the projects I've been working on this month. I'm trying, even though I'm not being monogamous, I'm trying to limit the patterns that I work on because uh, I need to start working on some Christmas gifts, uh, knitting Christmas gifts. I'm not doing as many as I did the first year I learned how to knit, but uh, for like three of my friends, I want to try to make small projects for them that they kind of requested after uh, last year's gifts. So um, I better get on that. So I wanna leave some room for that. And then starting in October, I am going to be having two new starts. So uh, I, I need to kind of get some significant progress on what I have going on at the moment <laughs> before I can do some new starts or else I'll overwhelm myself. So um, with that, let me talk about those new starts and some haul that I got to go with them. So the next new start I have on the horizon will start on October 1st and that is going to be Jane Eyre, the companion in my eyes to the Alice and the Flamingo pattern. This is also done by Mrs. Pagodi Art and Jane Eyre is a Victorian novel and I am going to be stitching her while I uh, listen to some audiobooks for the Readathon Victober where we spend the month of October reading and listening to Victorian novels. So, which of course Jane Eyre is one. <laughs> so I don't think I'm going to be reading Jane Eyre this month actually, because I reread it last year for Victober, but I am going to be reading another Bronte work, Wuthering Heights. So, which is also a reread for me, but uh, I will stitch on Jane while I listen to Wuthering Heights. <laughs> So at least it'll be a nod to the Brontes. But I'm really excited for this one. I love the colors. And I think this one will also be done on 14 count Ada, much like, well, I almost showed you my really bad back to, the, <laughs> to this. But this is also done on 14 count Ada with two strands. And I am still gonna do this one on 14 count Ada, but I actually think I might try three strands because this one is just, it's not wowing me with the coverage with two strands on 14 count. So I think I wanna try to get better coverage using three, three strands on Jane, we'll see. So the next new start will also bring with it some haul because I, I tried to get some fabric that I thought would go for this new project and it wasn't really quite what I thought. I'll still use it, trust me but I ended up buying another fabric that I will end up using for this project. So on also on October 1st, I will be starting a stitch along with my friend Sarah from The Bookish Knitter, and she just started a dedicated floss tube channel called Tea and Stitches. 
stitches and T, T and stitches. Yeah, T and stitches. <laughs> <laughs> I'll link it below. But uh, she just started a floss tube channel. She's been kind of like me incorporating her crafty stuff into her booktube channel, but she decided to go out and, and make a new channel. I'm still keeping it here. Uh, but um, we decided that we both wanted to uh, Stitch We Three by Lindy Stitches for Halloween. And she loves black cats. And I have been one of the witches in Macbeth uh, a couple of times. So um, what I should say, one of them was a spoof on Macbeth and one of them was like a dramatic reading of Macbeth. So I, I have not actually been in the full play of Macbeth, but I have played one of the witches. I've played a witch part um, twice. And, and know a lot of the lines. And one of the lines that I had to say in one of those uh, renditions that I was in was, uh, was the quote on this piece. So that comes on a lovely piece of green fabric. So uh, I was looking around, I have decided that I am an Ada stitcher through and through. <laughs> I don't mind using, um, using linen for smaller projects, but it's just too much thinking for me. So <laughs> I am just purely an Ada stitcher and I'm okay with that. So I was on Forbidden Fiber Co where I buy some of my fancier yarns for socks and things. And I, because I had seen on their Instagram that they are doing cross stitch flosses and fabrics. So I found a green that I thought would work, but when I got it, it, it just wasn't saturated enough, but it is a lovely light green, 16 count Ada. And it, I don't know if it's really showing up, but it is very, like you can tell, it's a, it's a very light green and it's beautiful. It's called Spearmint, um, but it's just not as saturated for the Wii 3 pattern as I would like. So instead, I went to the site Fire Poppies and was looking around at their green green fabric because there's a certain dyer on there that I know has a really saturated, nice green and she has put her stuff on Fire Poppies before and that's Jody from Steel City Stitchers. But that fabric has been out of stock for a while, which I completely understand. She has a lot going on. So I was just looking around at the other green fabric and I found this and I really, really like this. Ooh, and actually, look at that. It's pretty matchy matchy. <laughs> but this, I'm not really sure. Let me see. Marbled Sampler Green is what this, oh, XJU Designs. Okay, this is XJU Design. I didn't even know that when I bought it, <laughs> but I have heard of that dyer. So, um, and this is a, also is, and this is also a 16 count Ada. Um, and I just really love the marbling in this. So pretty. I think this will definitely work better for the Wii 3 pattern. So I'm really excited to start that with Sarah. Never fear, I will definitely use this for something. I'm thinking either the pattern Bloom Where You're Planted by Lindy Stitches or a sampler, or it's not a sampler, but a pattern that I got from my friend Tanya over at the Sampler Girl that is a Jane Austen pattern that I was going to start for Jane Austen July and just never got around to it. So I definitely still want to stitch that. So I might use this for that pattern. And speaking of the Jane Austen pattern by the Sampler Girl, I did buy some fancy, my first Forbidden Fiber Co. hand dyed flosses that I think I'm going to use on that pattern. I think I will use this pattern for Jane Austen's dress and this for the, um, the writing. So, and this is, let's see. Oh, Forever in Blue Jeans. This is from her um, Neil Diamond collection and Old Penny which might also be from that collection. I, I don't actually know, I forget. 
So, and I don't, does it say? No, it doesn't say, but <laughs> hopefully it'll get to that pattern soon. If not, it'll stick around until next Jane Austen July. It's not going anywhere. So, um, but I am definitely excited to, uh, to start all of these patterns. All right, friends, that is all I have for you today. I hope I wasn't too all over the place and quick for you. Um, I feel like I talked really fast, probably because I'm getting a little bit warm and I need to take the sweater off. <laughs> so, but, um, but yeah, I was really excited to show you all of the finishes I had this past month. And hopefully I will be back uh, at least in the middle of next month. Um, if not before, I don't know, I might see what I can get done in the next two weeks and try to get um, to, to get another episode up after two weeks. I don't know, we'll see. But um, if I don't see you before the start of October, uh, tell me what you're working on. Are you participating in Sampler September? Um, because that sounds like something that I'm gonna need to be on board with for the next foreseeable future in every September. <laughs> so, and what are your plans for October? Are you a reader? Are you going to participate in Victober with me? Are you, um, are there any like special stitch alongs that you participate in in October that I might not know about and might want to jump on board with because my booktube community knows that I just join all the things. <laughs> so why not put that in with uh, floss tube and knitting. So yeah. All right, friends. That's all I have to ramble at you about today. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.